Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video we're going to tackle the rear drum brakes on my 1989 Ford F350 with the 7.3 IDI diesel. Without further ado, let's get started. I initially wasn't going to film this but, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment so here we are. Got the drum off, it was stuck. A uh, good technique is take a mallet, just beat the crap out of it all the way around it. That'll help loosen it up. Ultimately, I had to take a pry bar and a hammer, and it was sticking on this shoe right here, and I got it off. So here we are. Uh, step one, before you go any further, is take lots of pictures. If you've never worked on drum brakes, they have a bunch of springs that go in very particular places, and... It is a good idea to take a bunch of pictures so that way you know where everything goes. Why don't you take it off? So you can see this sat for a while before I got it and started bringing it to life. And also you can see, if you look right there, you see that wetness? This wheel cylinder has failed. It is leaking brake fluid. It's not leaking as bad as its companion. I already did the driver's side and it was leaking bad enough that I was seeing it pool on the uh, on the tire. This one, not as bad, but leaking. So bad, gonna be replaced. So that's actually uh, where we're gonna start is we're gonna get this parking brake arm out of the way. To do that, Let's take a look. Welcome to the back side of the backing plate on your drum. Now you can see something's missing up there. I just took that off. That's like a 7 16th nut, I think. And it's kind of neat. Uh, this is a splined um, bolt. So if you start wiggling the front where that arm is, grab that, start wiggling it, put some pressure back here, it'll wiggle out. But because it's splined, this thing won't start rotating when you go to break the nut loose. So you don't have to fight with that, which is so, so nice. But once that's out of the way, we can come back over here. And it makes it easier to start getting all these springs out. You see, you can start wiggling this. If you wiggle it enough and you take a hand and kind of push back there, I, I need two hands to do it, but you wiggle it, push it, wiggle it, push it, it'll come out. And then this entire assembly you can just kind of let hang. Be careful though, uh, this, there it is right here. See how it's got a round and then a skinny? That is to let this slide in and out. And if you're not careful, it will slide out on you. It's not horribly hard to put back in, but it is a little obnoxious, so keep that in mind. After much, much wiggling, a little more wiggling, there we go. So just kind of get that out of the way. Probably a good idea to get yourself some kind of a pan. This is all brake dust. I didn't mention this job's messy. Uh, so there we go, you can see we got more leaky bits right there. So if we were only doing the wheel cylinder, at this point, you can do the wheel cylinder. You take off the brake line, uh, take loose the cylinder, swap your cylinder, and that's it, you're done. Um, I had to damage the shoe in order to uh, get this guy off the drum. So that means it all comes apart. But if you were just doing your wheel cylinder, you can do this now. So it's, I like that this design a lot. Makes it easy to service the cylinders without having to take everything else apart. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down low and we're gonna start taking this stuff apart. So 
easiest thing to do here is to get some vice grips and just unhook the spring from one side. Just kind of start taking stuff apart. And my suggestion to you is when you start doing this, lay it out on the ground, kind of in the order in which you, it was installed. So you have a rough idea of what needs to go where. This plus your pictures will uh, help you out quite a bit. So there's behave camera. There's this little springer here. You don't need to worry about him too much. He's easy to get out once you can pop this free. This just, there's spring tension on it, but you just kinda get on that and wiggle it. And there's a lot of two-handed work here. So I don't have my tripod. Even if I did, it'd be hard to get in there and give you the views that I like to give you guys. But you can take a hammer, tap that down, and then this, what this is, this is the advancing arm for when these auto adjust or self adjust, however you want to call it. So you just slide that down, it'll pop out. Take this loose, and then that should let the bottom of the brake shoes float quite a bit. But if you want to get the brake shoes completely out, you have to get this spring off of this hook. You do that and then you can feed the hook out and this is what's actually holding the shoe to the backing plate but before you get to that you also need to go ahead and knock out this dude or here and he's actually not that bad again uh, i mean i'll show you but needle nose pliers get in there give it the heave ho and it'll come out so when i went to pop this out i leveraged the hub just kind of See, I can stretch that by just levering on it, and that's how I got that out. Now this is out. As you can see, I'm laying things out over here in the order in which they came out, roughly. So I have a, a decent idea where stuff needs to go. And in short order, we're pretty much just down to the little the J-nails that are holding the shoes on. These drums actually aren't that bad to work on. The ones in my van are significantly more annoying. Okay, just like that. We are now down. You can see my Primarchs over there. But uh, we are now down to just the wheel cylinder. And if you get around back there, there's three things that need to happen. There are two one-half bolts that need to come out right yonder. And then that is a 7 16 brake line. And you need to be careful when you break that tube nut loose that you don't accidentally twist your line and snap it. Make sure the tube nut is able to rotate freely from the brake line itself. Okie doke. So, like I said, you got to transfer these arms and you want to make sure that they're not excessively crusty because if they are, those crusty bits can tear the sealing cups and the seals on your new wheel cylinder, which is no bueno, because then it's gonna leak. So I always take these, put them in the vise, get a wire wheel, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but just hit them with a wire wheel so that when you get up close and you take a look, you don't see any major pitting that the seal could catch on. So here's our cleaned up pusher arms. This is good. Here is our new wheel cylinder. It is a Dorman UW37251. A uh, quick and easy way to tell if you've got a left or a right is look at the direction that the brake line was pointing when you get everything oriented. So if it's installed, say, like this, and it should be pointing out to our left, it is. So this is the uh, passenger side cylinder, which is good, because I have had them mispacked in the past. Before we do anything else, though, we got to do some cleaning. So as you can see, this thing is super gross, 
And technically you don't have to do this, but as you can see, because I didn't do it previous. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and take some brake cleaner and just hose her down. Get all the propellant out so I can just throw this in the trash can. It's okay, just let it go, let it go. Just like that. Now, I don't know if you've ever worked with brake cleaner, but it goes quick. It goes real quick. So we want to hose everything down real good. And this is why I waited to do this until I had access to everything. And then you'll see some of the most foul stuff falling in your, your pan here. And then what I do is I get paper towels and I just, I wipe things down so I don't waste brake cleaner because it's, number one, it's getting hard to find the good stuff. Like this isn't the good stuff. This is non-flammable. So you couldn't use this to try to bottle feed a, a car or something like that. So it's getting hard to find the, the good stuff because the good stuff's chlorinated and they're trying to phase that out. Um, and chlorinated or non-chlorinated, stuff's getting a little expensive, even if you buy the generic stuff. So don't waste. There we go. Definitely not perfect, but it is a whole lot better than it was. So now hopefully we can finish this job without getting too horribly disgusting. I mean, it's too late for me, but maybe not for you. All right, before we go any further, we're gonna get our wheel cylinder in because we got to plug that leak, right? I'm gonna pop the bleeder still, so, but we want to have the ability to close it off, you know, in case you gotta step away or something like that. Um, after that, we need to grease these points. I always spectacularly fail at greasing them and then actually getting stuff sitting on them with the grease still on them, but you are supposed to grease those points to help keep your brakes quiet, help keep metal from rubbing into metal because if that happens you need a new backing plate and it's kind of poopy because as you can see if you get this off this has to come off which means your half shaft has to come out yay all right let me go ahead and get this new cylinder in there you know it's a pair of one half bolts and then I'll go ahead and get the brake line in and then I'll pop the bleeder and that will let the air get out of the cylinder and also let us do squishy things so we can get the new shoes on without issue. All right, quick pro tip. I found in order to get the brake line on without losing your mind, I can get this to come around. There we go. Uh, take the bleeder out. It's going to be a 10 millimeter on this doorman. Um, take that out so you can actually get a clean shot at the tube nut get that done and now what it should be doing is working on filling up the uh, wheel cylinder so that it has fluid and once it's full we should see it start to come out the bleeder so you can use for these contact points you can use brake grease uh, anti-seize that's what I'm going to be using just because I happen to have it handy it's, you don't have to goober it but just lightly coat contact points and it's pretty easy to tell where they are they tend to have a checkerboard where they are and if you're lucky this will actually stay and uh, you know you're not going to have to fight with your shoes and they slip and slide and go everywhere and then your anti-seize goes everywhere and yeah, you know. But that's all I got to do there. And then we'll go ahead and now we can put those pusher arms in. Because we're getting ready to slide brake shoes back on. You just kind of take them. And then this is what happens when you don't have the bleeder cracked is number one, I need to clean the antices off. But number two, as you can see, I'm trying to shove it in. I can't get it to seat. 
because this is filling up with fluid and it can't displace because there's nowhere to it for it to displace. So I need to crack the bleeder and then I should be able to shove that in. There, that went much better with the uh, bleeder off. All right, let's turn our attention to parts. So I have these power stops, which they're, they're kind of an economy line. They, they do all right. And then I got this Dorman Deluxe Hardware Kit, HW2314. And it actually has not only all the new springs and stuff that you need, but it actually also has, uh, if you need it, it has the cable tensioner for the parking brake. It's got your inspection port plug, which is really nice. If your brake shoes don't have the pin and the other hardware that needs to be added, it has that. And it's got the actual advancing arm right there. And you've got a brand new star wheel adjuster in the spring. So it has everything, which is really nice. Now, a note here. This truck is a dual dually. It has two wheels each side on the rear axle. Duallys have a different drum and a different brake shoe than the single wheel version of this truck. So if you found this video for an F and you've got an F250 single wheel or you got an F350 single wheel, you need to pay attention. Um, if you go to Rock Auto, it will call out whether or not it's a dually. It'll say with dual wheel or without dual wheel. Pay attention to that because the dual wheel shoes are wider than the single wheel. And the drum is taller. And it's pretty easy to tell because the drum's got the extra holes in it to allow for the alignment pin which is this fella right here. Don't be like me and accidentally order the wrong drum. Yeah, so now I got a drum that's not really worth my while to send back. Oh, here's my, here's my part number. There it is. These are PowerStop 583Rs again. 583R is for the dual wheel variant it has a three and a half inch wide shoe the other one's a little bit narrower make sure you have the right one for your application all right now since i've already done the driver's side i already know that these are the correct shoes for the passenger side and you know which one's going to go where because this fella here the, on the power stops anyway, this extra reinforcement plate is visible when you're looking at it. It's not going to be on backside. And this extra hardware here is for the, the parking brake arm. And we already know that was on the left side. So this one's going to go on the left and we can match it against what we took off and sure enough there's that reinforcement there's the wire guide and there's our little bits and bobs so uh I mean, the shoes are called primary and secondary shoes i can never remember which one's the primary which one's the secondary so i just go by you know what side does it belong to and that means that this is our other side and if you're not 100 percent sure you can um check up here there's a different amount of metal that's going to be exposed depending on which shoe you're working with as you can see so it's handy as long as you've got old shoes that have a, a decent you know they're not completely fried and you can look but uh oh, this one's got a little old shoe on it it's all right and by the way these are brake clean safe so if you get some grease or whatever on them during install don't worry about it you can spray them down with brake clean and you're fine and all will be well so we're gonna need if you remember 
little spring jobber and the J nails. What's coming up is the hardest part of this entire process of putting it all back together, which is getting the shoes hung back up. Okay, definitely couldn't film this part because I don't have enough hands, but this is what I did. I grab the very end of the spring. I get the spring in, grab the very end with the locking pliers. I then push the shoe all the way over against its stop up here. This is going to have to squish in a little bit. Again, you need to have the bleeder off so you can do this. Squish that in. Get that kind of pinned into place. You're then going to need to take, and this is painful, but it's the only way I know how to do it alone with the strength that I have. Take your palm and then push. And push with everything you got. Because then you're going to have to take your other hand and as you're pushing this spring in, maneuver this J hook, this J nail, over to where you can just slip it under the spring. And then you can let go with the locking pliers and you're good to go. So we now have one of our shoes on. We're going to get the other shoe back on and then we're going to go from there. By the way, it is this hole right here is where your spring needs to come out of this right here. And uh, let's do the other side. Oh, I don't know if my hand's going to be ever be the same again, but there we go. So we got this hooked in. Um, this is in place. This I'm kind of curious about right here. But I'm going to start putting springs in. We'll see if that cleans up or not. The cylinder is, is completely full of fluid now, and it is actively gravity bleeding out, which is good. I was having some issues with the old cylinder. Now I know why. Because it's bad. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to put the green spring back in. Or put the new one in. You don't know it was green. I know it was green. But you just kind of get one end of it hooked. It's going to go... I think it goes right here. Yeah, just get it to pop in. Yeah, because it can't go in this other spot, so it's going to go here. Come across. Again, you'll use your pliers, kind of pry against the hub. Um, get that over there, get it to lock in. And then we move down, and there is a brown spring that needs to run across. And we also need to get our star wheel Montgomery inserted and a couple other things, but putting it back together once you get this done is not bad. Okay, next up is our brown spring. It's gonna go in this hole that's all the way in the back. It's gonna run across to this other hole all the way in the back. Again, it's grab it with your uh, vice grips and yoink it over. And after that, we're down to inserting, you know, the uh, star wheel adjuster and all the stuff that's accompanied with that. I was able to figure this out. It was because the entire wheel cylinder was ever so slightly cocked. And once I straighten that out, it looks better. I don't know if that would have actually affected performance or not, but I wanted to go ahead and straighten that out. All right, for your star adjuster, make sure you check what direction it was facing when it came out. You can see this one was actually adjusted pretty far out, which is kind of interesting. Um, we're going to have it all the way in so that we can actually get it to slip in. And then we're going to we'll manually adjust it once we get everything back together. So these are actually sided when you're looking in the kit. So you see there's an R stamped right there. That means right passenger side. So this is the one for the passenger and what happens is the teeth wind up backwards if you put the wrong one in. They don't line up with the little advancer arm gummer like they're supposed to. 
So we'll take care of this first, and then we'll go ahead and get in all the, there's one more spring in the advancer arm, and then we need to take this guy and put him back in. And this cable has to be routed a certain way. You may be saying, but wait, Jared, why don't you replace this? The reason why, there's a double, this, uh, remember I said this bolt is splined? Well, this part is splined as well. And I don't wanna, with this cable being in okay shape, I don't wanna go through the hassle of fighting it off that spline and replacing it. If this was broken, I'd grit my teeth and I'd do it. It's not. And I doubt that the spring is worn out. So I'm just going to put it back in. If you feel the urge, like I said, you're going to need to pry it apart up there, kind of wiggle the splines loose, maybe throw some coil and some heat on it. And then you'll be able to pop that out and replace it. Okay, so remember splined, you'll have to get it lined up and kind of tap it in with a mallet before you can put the nut on the back. But before we do that, we need to run this wire, and it does need to run a certain way. So as you can see, it goes around that, that protected bend right there, and then it needs to run behind the nail, okay? It needs to run behind that in the spring, and it's going to come down, and then it needs to be sitting about like that. Uh, you need to make sure that your cable is on top of and in front of your brown spring right there. And if you got all that set up that way, you're in pretty good shape. We'll go ahead, we'll address this last. It's the easiest thing to work on, so. Yep. But you can, once you have that cable ran the way you ought, take a hammer. on it and you'll know you're getting somewhere if you can feel behind and you can actually feel the bolt coming through which I do I just pushed it back out you may need to wiggle a little bit as you tap to get the splines to line up but once it goes all the way in you'll have enough that you can thread the nut on put the nut back on and you're good to go all right this little star wheel advancer it is also sided see this one has an R stamped on it passenger side and the little spring that goes with it is also sided. So look carefully. This coil is opposite depending on what side you're on. Now this is not stamped. You just need to kind of notice that. But what you can do if it's not broken is compare, you know, your spring. So you can see the coils go the same direction. The bins go the same direction. So this should be a valid replacement. So what we want to do here is, firstly, I get the camera where you guys can see. You're going to insert this here, and then you're going to have to fight with it. See, you got to, you have to take a mallet and tap it in, but basically you got to slide this up. Sorry about that, guys. You got it slide this up and it may take a little finesse because it's fresh metal but you slide that in before you do that though i almost forgot you got to put your spring on first and the spring is going to go something like that and then the arm goes on and the spring is going to hook on the arm down here and then once all that's done, this little dude is going to come down from the top and hook into the top of the arm. So when you're all done, this is what it looks like. The spring comes through the back here, it comes around, hooks across the top like so. And then your spring hook comes down, catches the top in there. And if you're routed correctly, which, hang on, we got to minor routing issue up here there we go that's better so if you're routed correctly 
Yeah, you come down through there, shoot down through here, you come down here. And then the idea is when you hit the brakes in reverse, that, or you hit the parking brake, um, when you hit the parking brake, it's supposed to lift up on this if it can, and it'll turn this wheel, should turn it to the inside. And I can't do it with my bare fingers. But you turn it to the inside and then it spreads the shoes out a little bit. That way the shoes are supposed to always find a way to sit relatively tight against the drum. So you have good stopping power. So that is it. If you made it this far, go get yourself a cookie. Because we're done. Uh, you're going to want to check for leaks on your brake line and your bleeder and the cylinder itself because new does not mean good new means untested so i have had these fail on me right out of the box it's super annoying and uh there we go the very last thing you need to do is once you get it all adjusted up and you adjust it up by putting the drum on after you clean it up of course and when the drum is slightly draggy on the brakes, and you'll need to put both the whole rear end and the air to check this, when it's slightly draggy on the brakes, you'll be good to go. Once you do all that, there is a inspection port. I'm blocking it with my finger there so you can see it. There's a plug for it, and you want to put that plug in. And there's our plug. All right, last thing we got to do here is we need to get our newly installed brakes relatively close to where they need to be so that hopefully the self adjuster will take care of it. And if not, we can manually take it the rest of the way after you do some driving and you get a feel on how the brakes are. But as you can see right now, I have to use both hands here, but I was able to slide the drum off really easy. It was almost no resistance at all. So what that means is the shoes are not spread far enough apart. What you want at a minimum, and everyone's got their own opinion on this, but at a minimum, you want it so that when you go to put the drum on, you have to fight it a little bit against the shoes. Because that means that basically the drum is contacting the shoes lightly which is what you want so that when you hit the brakes and those pusher arms push, it's actually going to do something meaningful. What's going on with this truck right now is I redid the driver's side, which is where we are. And now the pedal basically goes to the floor and then it bites really hard. And what that tells me is that the rear brakes are completely out, even though I know they're fixed now because I just fixed the passenger side as well. Um, which means that their adjustment was way off. So I've already adjusted the passenger side, and now I'm going to show you on the driver's side what you got to do. What we want to look at is take a look at how much current adjustment there is. There's almost none in the grand scheme of things. Uh, so we need to fix that. And what you do is you're going to turn this wheel inwards like this. You know you're doing it right, you hear those clicks. And it's very finite adjustment, but you keep doing that, you'll notice we're slowly spreading the shoes apart at the bottom. So what I found out with a bunch of trial and error just on the other side is we need to go about double this, at least this is what I am finding, and then you're gonna get close to where when you go to slide the drum on, it actually kind of, you know, it's contacting the drum. There's a little bit of effort involved instead of just zoop and it going on. You may be thinking, well, what if I go too far? Not a big deal. You just take this out of line like that and then just spin the wheel the opposite direction to, you know, bring it back in to pull the shoes inward a little bit until you can get your drum on and try again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then when I'm kind of happy with where it is I'll take it back off one more time and show you how much this extended to get it to where I think is a good starting place. All right so we're out this much and we're just now getting to the point where we're contacting the 
the brake shoe surface whenever I slide this back and forth. So I might give it a few more clicks, but we're close, at least again as a starting point. And then as you drive, depending on your driving style and this and that and the other, you may loosen this slightly or you may make it a little bit tighter, but pretty close to a starting point.